Thank you all for coming. Uh, before I begin, and Hannah, uh, tonight, uh, there are a couple of words that uh, Mary Baker Wood, town historian, is hiding here somewhere. She wanted to come up and, <laughs> and mention a few things, and I'd be glad to have her do that. There you are. Come on up. It's all yours. Thank you. Honestly, um, I planned an hour-long speech, but I think I'll forget it. <laughs> um, I first of all, I want to say how excited I am as a town historian that uh, Frank and Hannah have done an amazing job. If you haven't seen this book already, it, it really is. Um, for those of us who are townies, it, it's an amazing thing. And even if you had the stories he's telling and the, and the work that, that you folks did on it is amazing. The reason I was asked to say a couple of words is that I am in the process of reorganizing the Spencer Historical Society. I've come back um, to the library on a, a historical-only basis, and so I'm in um, Tuesday mornings to do lo local history research, but I'm finding it doesn't give me time to work in the museum and, and the archives. And so I'm going to leave a checklist uh, uh, in back um, tonight. Um, I would love to see more people come forward in town and help us with history. Right now, I'd love to reorganize, to, to see what you'd like for programming. Um, we have a digital photo project ready to go that we need help with. Um, I have a museum that I'd like to reopen and, and would love ideas and helpers for that. So the reason they asked me to speak tonight was just to let you know that uh, we're hoping to have an, an, this will help us to kick off breathing new life into the Spencer Historical Society. And um, I will leave this if anyone is interested in contacting me. Um, my name is actually on the uh, historical library website or to sign up here, just give me some contact information. We're going to be having uh, an organizational meeting next month um, and hoping to get um, the wonderful um, photos and stories that we have um, in the museum out so everybody can see them. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you for coming. We really appreciate the turnout. Uh, I'm Frank Morrow. This is my granddaughter, Hannah Morrow. This is our third collaboration on books. We've done three. We did one on Worcester. We did uh, when she was 10, and she keeps growing, and now she's uh, 15, and this is our third one. We did one on Charlton. I think we're covering the subjects because Worcester is where I'm originally from. I grew up in Spencer. So we covered Worcester, and we covered Charlton, where we're from now, and we did Spencer, where I went to high school. So we've got to find some other, some other one for our next book. But um, I've enjoyed the work with Hannah. I've enjoyed working here. I'd like to thank Denise, who's been putting out chairs, and, and Cheryl, who is the librarian here, they could not have been more helpful, as they could tell you I've uh, visited here a lot. It's been, it's been really wonderful. You have a great library here. You have great resources. And we're going to talk about the pictures in a moment, but I want to talk uh, just for a second about the experience it is to do uh, a book with your granddaughter. It's, it's cool. I'll leave it at that. It's, it's pretty cool. It's uh, very fulfilling. It's a wonderful experience. I won't ask her how it's been for her some days when you're taking the pictures. Take five more, but I already took 30. <laughs> you, can, you can do more. She'll address that later. So without any further ado, I, I'd like to begin. And what I'm going to do today, what we're going to do is go through about 50, 60. I think there's about 60 pictures. Most are not in the book. We might mention why they're not in the book. Uh, they're not going to be befores and after, although I'll tell you more about them. But they're old pictures of the town. We couldn't choose them all. I have about five or six hundred Spencer pictures in, in my collection. And um, we also got some from here. My collection is rather vast of the different towns. I went to school here. I graduated in 1962 from David Prouty. So some of you might even, I've already made a connection over here with someone I was friendly with. So we're going to begin now and we'll take you for a little run. After that, we'll be signing over here, signing books uh, for you. We have some uh, Charlton ones, if you're interested in those, and some Worcester, we brought a few of those, but most of we have dispensed with us, and we shall begin. And we should begin by telling you about what photographs we used. I used many from uh, William Bullard. Uh, he's a photographer who took 5,400 glass negatives in his time, lived in Worcester, lived in North Brookfield, died in 1918. A vast collection of 5,400. I, I own all of those. I own every one of his glass negatives, and there's some tremendous Spencer pictures in there. And he took them from like 1918 back to uh, his first pictures were 1894. Uh, glass negatives, in case you don't know what those are, some people look at me strange. The glass negatives, look at the, I have a little collection right in the case uh, over in the library over there. You'll see a couple of big negatives. You'll see negatives this big. 
because enlargers weren't coming in until after 1900, really. So if you were taking, if you want an 8x10 picture, you had to have an 8x10 negative to make a contact print. So it really, you really needed to have huge cameras, and these guys were carrying them around. He used to ride around on a bicycle right in this town, everything packed on the back. Spencer Historical Society, got some there, and they, they have been really helpful. I think uh, there's about 10 in the book that they were kind enough to loan to me. And then Richard Green. How many people here knew Richard Green? Yeah, I figured mostly he had the home down at 257, I believe, uh, Main Street, uh, down towards the Dairy Queen. And the florist. Uh, Richard was a wonderful man. Uh, I have most of his collection of glass negatives I got many years ago uh, from him. He wanted them to go where they'd be used. Well, they're used, and some are in the book. And I'm going to even show you a neat picture of his dad taken way back. And now I'm going to turn it over, and she's going to talk about how we did the new photographs, all the, the, the afters. So when we're taking the pictures, we face many challenges such as trucks being in the way of the buildings or the garbage cans, especially on Mechanic Street. There was this one particular truck that just never seemed to leave. Um, after that, we went down and went to Cherry Street and where the old spoon factory was, and there was a black trailer there every single time we went. We went in a span of several weeks and it was still there, but we still managed to get a picture. We took over 800 photos and we only used 92 in the book. Uh, many we had to take several times because we had to get the angle and perspective right to match the old photo. Um, as you probably know, during the time we were taking the pictures, there was a lot of construction going on around this area, especially in the center of Spencer. And um, we tried to work around the workers, but we often got police and cones in the way. Uh, some photos we took happened to not end up in the book because they don't represent the value of history because the buildings are gone now. For example, on Gold Nugget Road, there used to be an old schoolhouse, and when we got there, we found just a grassy field. Another um, South Spencer Railroad Station, we went looking for it and couldn't find it, and a nice gentleman lay us in the back of his yard where we only found a few remains of the station. All set? Well, let's run through the pictures. Thank you, Hannah. And as a retired high school teacher, I can tell you that's not easy for a youngster to get up in front of a crowd. And I will just share this tiny story with you. When I went to high school, we had a Miss Burkle. And she, I was, had her for speech class in 1961. And it was my turn to get up and give a speech. And I sat there, and I kept pulling my heart back into my chest. It was like, and I pulled it back into my chest, and it was my turn. And she called on Kenny Benoit, Dr. Benoit, uh, ahead of me. And he went up, and it was my turn. And I got up, and I said, yeah, bye. And I went down to guidance, and I transferred out to class. <laughs> So in 1969, when I went back to do my practice teaching, she looked at me and she said, Mr. Morrill, really? You're going to get up in front of a class, really? And I did. You get used to it. So let's begin. This picture here is looking down. You see the tower is still there. This is La Cale Lumba. And you're looking down, and way in the distance off of Linden Street on Cherry Street, you'll see right there is the old Prouty Mansion. It's gone, and all you see is a little wall in front of it now. They tore that down in the 40s when Mr. Knoya had it. What a shame. It was uh, taxes, heating it, it was apartments. This was a beautiful building. But we tend to tear down beautiful buildings, and Spencer has had a lot of them. This, you won't recognize at all. If you ever go to the Fallon Clinic up near the Spencer Country Inn, that's the Fallon Clinic. That was there. I'm not kidding. Do I look like I'm kidding? I'm dead serious. This one is, I find, I didn't put it in the book for a couple reasons. I talked to Mary Baker Wood about this one. Remember the discussion we had on this? This is the top of the hill, Dr. Grace's dentist office. Well, take a look. Four columns, no columns on the side. Five columns, columns down the side. Someone decided how can we hide a house inside there. It really is. You were correct. It really is that residence. And it's amazing. Uh, that's taken right here. That's 1902. This is Finally Kelly's, which is right here, right there, Finally Kelly's. That, I knew that as Dr. Fowler's office. And what I didn't know, talking to his daughter, was he had that office. He continued to practice until into the 1990s. He, was, he had to be well over 80 years old. I didn't realize that. 
and now uh, I've spoken with the girl that uh, now owns it. That was built in 1832. That's really got some age on it. She's got it in. What? 50 years after that, my house was built. My house was built in 1880. So, that, and that, that's old, so you can imagine. And this uh, is a fruit store belonging to Luigi Piangentini. He was not Irish, by the way, as you can tell. This is the post office. It was the Snave Lock, 1955, it burned down. I, I point this out for a reason because right next to it, right there, you can see shingles. That's the Champ. The Champ Theater. I used to go to the Champ, that beautiful little theater. That also burned down. Everything burns down. So the Champ Theater was that one. It was built in 1909, roughly 1909, as the Park Theater. I knew it as the Champ. How many remember the Champ? Oh, I love this. Okay. Had my first date. Oh, my wife's here. I really care. <laughs> Sixth grade. I can remember. You know her, Lillian Miller. Your. There she is. We went to the. Oh my God. Hello. Wow. Oh. I remember going. We had cartoon features. You remember? Oh wow. Okay. A little red in the face here. <laughs> Woo. With my wife hiding, that was a bit. This is, this is uh, Herbert Green. It's a very young man uh, on his land, down near the Dairy Queen. On the, that's, uh, must be his prized cow. Uh, we'll see that cow, an another cow is gonna come into play in a moment. That's Richard Green's dad. Yep. And this I put in simply because that's on that land. I remember doing this. Uh, I hadn't mentioned it, but uh, moral, I grew up across the street from the black and white. My parents built the black and white. Uh, that was my life for 18 years. We built it in 51. You'll see some pictures of it later. And we used to do this. We had 22 acres there. And there was nothing like throwing that hay up there when you're like 14, 15 years old on a 90 degree summer day. It, was, it wouldn't stick to you or anything. It was great. And now, see, they had a shortage of horses on the green farm because that's a cow. <laughs> that's, that's Richard Green's aunt. That is a classic photograph. This is Richard Green's house, right in front of his house, at the end of the driveway, where it connects to the barn. And this is Richard Green's, the, the florist on Park Street, which, by the way, started out as Green Street before they put that sign for the public park at the end, which is now gone. But that's some snow right there to clean it up. But if you think that's snow, how about that? Because I used to walk to school uphill both ways in the snow. You remember that? That's snow, and that had to be shoveled. And I thought you might get a kick out of this. This was taken uh, next to the school by Green's house, the, the little school. Well, it's still there, the old, old school. And look at this girl right here. She's sticking her tongue out. I mean, it, they never stop, right? <laughs> this is uh, about 1898 or 9. There's 45 stars. 45 stars came in in 1896 and lasted until 1908. Came in with Utah. Utah was number 45. History teacher. I'm sorry. I can't help myself. They also, for enjoyment in those days, parades. Everybody loves a parade, right? Well, they had parades. I have tons of parade pictures. But this was an interesting one because they paid this man, as you can see, $8,000 to dig a well and put in a standpipe to fill it up, and it was dry. So down the bottom, they said, $8,000, it's dry, where's the water, Dexter? Wow. So they actually put a float to that degree. That's Maple Street, by the way. And if you were right behind that, if you could see, it's Holy Rosary going up the hill. This is right in front of Morin's. And here they are coming up in front of the high school. This lady is standing in front of Denny Hall. Denny Hall was, was your first high school. It was where the old, uh, the, the Prouty condominiums are across the street. That's, that was up there. And then they had to move it in 1888 across the street. And then they, uh, David Prouty gave them the money for the high school, 45,000 or whatever it was to build the high school. And this is the fire department. And this little picture right, right there that's the pumper. And you, now, now you know the answer to why did everything burn down? <laughs> we were at the parade. 
you might as well throw cups of water at it. You know, it's just. I still haven't gotten over the fact that Lillian's sitting over there. Okay. This is, this is a, right in front of Denny Hall also, coming up Main Street, Proudy's on your right, the old Proudy. And I, I kind of like this one. I always like interesting photographs. This one's interesting because it says right there, choice meets. And the look on the horse was like, I hope they're not talking about me. You know? Because again, this is 1900. This is a very interesting photograph, 1890s. This little boy is asking a question. This is an early RV. <laughs> Seriously? Wow. Right here, you can see that he is holding the Spencer leader under his arm. Oh, okay. oh, wow. Holding the Spencer leader. If you blow it up, you can read. And that's a map of where he traveled. My travels through March, it says, if you've got a, if you've got a scope. And that really is oh, okay. sleeping in it, living in it. An early RV. Oh. And I just, I, oops. Yeah, I got it, okay. Uh, this is, oh, when Hannah was talking about South Spencer, that's it. That's the railroad station. Can't find anything. It's gone. This man put us in the backyard and he said, there's some cement blocks, a little piece of foundation to this, oh, that's over here. There's a little building over here. None of this is, this. you couldn't, couldn't take a picture. And when you're doing it then and now, you have to have some frame of reference of today. And this is district school number seven, Brian, you know where that would be, not too far from uh, going up to your house. It's, that's a, a private residence now. They've done some enlarging of it. And I, I mention it because it's in the book, but not this photo. If you look right over here, most of the Spencer schools had swings attached. They attached to the side of the building and out to a tree, and the kids would swing. We're from Charlton. I've done the book on Charlton. I've done talks on Charlton. 13 schools, not one has a swing. So I, I guess kids weren't as appreciated in Charlton. I'm not sure. But... <laughs> This is now covered by trees, and it's in the book, but a different photograph. And there it is, my old alma mater. Those front steps right here, you couldn't go up those steps unless you were a senior. Yeah, although we, you know, we would sneak up the steps when we could. And then there was no addition back here. Notice, that wasn't put on until 1937, so this is the original David Prouty. And those of you who remember the gym at David Prouty was about the size of this room. It was very, very tiny. And it's, I mean, obviously it's still there, but I don't know what it's used for. And notice the Congregational Church next door, which was built in 1863, 1862, it burned down. And they built it. It's always white. I've never remembered anything but white, but it was cream color and brown on the bottom, or whatever that part is on the bottom. It's beautiful again here now as they put the uh, Prouty Park back in. This is a shot that didn't make it in the book. This is looking up. You all remember that. This was Cumberland Farms. I remember it as uh, uh, getting my first haircut up here in, in, the, you know, in Al Archambault. Then he moved down to uh, Mechanic Street. And this place right here, that was the Busy Bee. Ray Rich had the Busy Bee, a little bar. And then Ray Rich moved from there down to where the Mexicali Grill is. Right there. And this is to the right of David Prouty, the one you presently have. This is a private residence. David Prouty is right here. That's the fields up on top. That's a private residence. In 1922, Sibley, that was Sibley Mansion up on the hill. That was a big, big, I have pictures of it, of the Sibley Mansion. And they decided to open little snack bars, which were unheard of at that time. 1922, drive-ins. They had three. Yep, 1922, and that's, it's now a private residence. There it is, sitting up on the hill. It used to face the town. It didn't face Route 9, it kind of faced the town. Much better view looking at the town. They could see everything as you're going to see because there were no trees. I think there were only two trees in, in Spencer at the time. That's a joke. There were four. Now, wait till you see. Because it was all farms, and if you notice stone walls everywhere, and the reason that you see stone walls is because they were working the fields. And if you work in the fields, you can't have trees in the fields. Yeah. So that's why you take a walk in the woods today and you see stone walls and you think, what dumb farmer put stone walls in the woods? Well, it really didn't work out that way. This was an incredible building, 52 rooms. 120 feet long, 50 feet deep with porches. And this is, is that amazing? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry? Sibley lived in it for a very short time. It was a summer home. Oh. 
He lived out near Rochester, in Rochester, New York. Uh, the Sibley family, he was very wealthy, built it in 1899. The hurricane of 38 hit it. They tore it down in 39 because why would you save this building? Why bother? This is, this is right here coming out to Main Street. That's Greenville Street. So that gives you a perspective. That's why I put that picture in. And both of these places, this and that, are still there. This, I'm going to show you this one after Josiah Green's house. That was, but look at that thing up there. What happened is, of course, many of you know this. They went in, they leveled the field off in different levels. So you've got a football field, and then you go up another level. They took the top of the hill down to make it like it is. Check that stone wall out going across there. It's amazing. It's amazing stuff. And there they are inside. This was very well done. I have about 20 pictures of the inside. That's, and every single picture is a window behind somebody. And, I mean, I could go into Photoshop and work on it, but that's what it looks like. It's it was just beautiful. It was just a beautiful building. And that's a, a blank slide right there. And now we're going to see from the porch of that place. From that porch, and what I'm going to do is take you from west, and we're going to head east towards the Dairy Queen, okay? So you can get, now look at the trees. So few, right? So few, you could never take this picture, right? We went up there, and you go, yeah, okay, great. It's, just, it's all green, and we couldn't, you couldn't, even in a, in a winter shot, you can't get a good picture. So you'll see that that is the town hall. You're going to see that after. That's the second town hall, not the one that's up there now. They built it in 1872, and guess what happened to it? <laughs> Burned down, 1926, right to the ground. And that, come on, that's the Congregational Church with the high school tower right next to it. And now we're moving more towards the Dairy Queen, moving east, and you see over here the Congregational Church. And that is the Josiah Green Boot Factory. If you drive at the end of Greenville Street, you're facing Main Street, almost directly across the street, there's still a part of it left, a separate building left. It was right there to the left. And they tore it down, and they turned it into the Spencer Broom Factory, the lumber. And that's still, that's still over there. Yep, that's a broom factory. And then right next door to it, that's still standing. That's Josiah Green's home, uh, which is somewhere, I couldn't find the exact date, but it's somewhere in the eight, 1834 is when they started the factory, so I'm not, I'm not sure. He actually predates Prouty. He was the first bootmaker, but of course, the Prouty Clevens uh, thing we had here was the biggie. And then to show you again, there's the Congregational Church. Now we're moving again. You can't take that picture. We've tried to take the picture and get the pond, but it's just too many trees around it, no matter what season. It's very difficult. And this is still there. That home is still there with the barn, and the Dairy Queen is in here, right in this area, here somewhere, right in the front. So that gives you a perspective. Now, this one is taken from Prospect Street area up on the hill. We have a really nice story about that. Is Mark Bernard in here somewhere? No, somebody? He might be here. He's he supposed to come at some point tonight. Uh, they, had a th they have a three-decker up on Prospect Street, and I'm looking around, where can we get a picture? And I look up at this, and it over it's overlooks the whole town. And we took matching pictures, Hannah and I, from up there. Now, right there is the Bacon Colette block. Now, that's right across the street in front of the Sugden block, right across the street, the doctor's office now. That's when it was in really good shape. Pleasant Street is right aside of it. And then this picture, you can just see it between the trees. That's the tower of the old Massasoit Hotel. And I got a nice picture of Massasoit coming up. Well, it's not that nice. It's got some problems. And those are the Prouty mansions on top of the hill. One left. There's still one up there. I've been in it. It's beautiful. The woodwork, it's, it's a multifamily. Um, now, you'd recognize this because that's Muzzy Meadow. This is up off of Ash Street. And you see the old St. Mary's. And it was quite prestigious looking with those towers and, of course, Holy Rosary, where uh, I got married a long, long time ago. And how many know what this is without? This is from Prospect Street again, looking at West Main Street School. 
now you try to take a picture like that. We did. We, we waited till there weren't many leaves, and you can see the school, but it's just covered. You can't see enough of the homes. But it's in the book. That's a, that's a plug to buy the book, by the way. Uh, you'll see uh, that school was built in 1867. So it's, it's an oldie. And then these, none of you probably have seen many pictures of this. You know where the Maple Street School is, yellow brick building at the top of Maple Street? Uh, from, I believe, 57 to 76, that was a Catholic school. And uh, then the town took it over and used it as a school. Before it was there, there were two schools there. And I'm going to, this isn't a great shot, but this is. That's from McDonald Street, looking at the back of them. So if you were to look at this, that's the parking lot next to the yellow school, which is right here. This, in 1922, became Prouty Junior High School. And it stayed Prouty Junior High School until 1937 when Prouty added on to the back of the high school. And there's Clevens. And there's something else that really, I put that picture there for another reason. Look at those elm trees. Spencer, Main Street, and other streets were lined with elm trees. And then in 1928, 29, Europe sent us a few bugs. And by the 40s, they had gotten here in New England. And you, you know the rest is history. I was killing them off. That was a massive building. We're going to see it coming up again. This is the Mason House, now just part of the parking lot. This was an early tavern, the Mason Tavern. Ebenezer Mason. It's in the book. More detail. <laughs> if, we, if we now turn from that photograph and look down Mechanic Street, you'll see the Marsh Block, which is still there. The front is different. This has been added on to. The back has been taken down. It's still, it's still all there, though. Most of this is still here. They've just enlarged the front where those people are standing. They'd be now in the building. And I remember it as Fenneff's, uh, Fenneff's shoe store. And notice that in those days, they had a little problem with spelling, uh, with gasoline. Uh, you picked up on that immediately. Oh, I thought I had an E in it. Early spelling, if you, you get it till about 1925, you will see E-N-E -E in most places in the country. And then for some reason, somebody decided that was wrong, I guess. We're going to go further down the can yes? Yes. Yes. And, I don't know how those things in there. Same building, we're just going further down, same building. And then, how many of you have eaten at Five Loaves? Probably many of you have gone up to that little, it's a really nice little bakery and restaurant. And you'll see, you'll see, it's right there. It wasn't built yet. I believe that building was built in 1928, so it's just a fence. There may have been a structure further back. I can't tell. You know, it's hard for me to tell in the picture. There aren't many pictures of it. Nice shot. And then we look, once again, we go a little further. This is the fence. That's gone, of course. And then look, right up there. That's Holy Rosary Tower. And at the end, you see this building here. It's still there in terrible disrepair. It has a big X on it. Why? Yeah. Firemen put the X on it. It's not safe structurally to go in. I've been in it a long time ago, 50 years ago or so. But yes. Those have been, those new windows are old. They are. And a lot of, I don't think anybody's doing anything to it. There was a building, that's a good question, there's another building <laughs> attached to it. If you faced it yeah. from the sea, there was another yeah. one, the cane block, that finally just about fell over. They okay. took that down. I hope they don't take that down, but it's structural and it's, it's in trouble. Yeah. It's definitely in trouble. And I address it more in the book. Plug, plug for the book. Right there. Uh, that belonged to uh, uh, Green. It was the Green block. And then it became the Lamro Block Furniture, as Lamro Furniture Company, at the turn of the century, spread all over the town. This is now going down the other end of Mechanic Street and looking back. And you see those scissors right there? My wife's maiden name is Dufo. That was, would have been her great uncle. Uh, and there is a connection that's coming up the street. And at the very end, that's right at the end on Main Street, that's Isaac Prouty Boot Factory. That was a stunningly huge, that thing reached, 
Mary, what, like five or six hundred feet long? It just kept going. You know where the supermarket is. Over here. It, it went right past the back of the supermarket. I mean, it was enormous. And another one on this side of it. Big towers. In fact, kind of tucked in that in the middle was the original town hall. They, they, they bought it for $1,000 or something and stuck it in there. That's when, that's when you would move buildings. Oh, yeah. Around, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, but that, that's a really nice shot. Beautiful street. And his now, right at the end again, Cherry Street's right here at the end. And looking back, it does not look like that today. I wish it did. I wish they would refurbish it. It's a beautiful street. It would really be nice. And the post office is right there, straight down. And how about those days? Uh, Fourth of July, looking a little busy. And then you look right up there, you'll see a D on the roof because it said, in the roof, drugs. Because I guess airline pilots, you know, at that time, they were just a little, little kind of... They use a lot of drugs. No one else could read it. I don't know why it was them. But you would, you would find those. They, they, were marking, they were markers. But you would see words like that, the name of a building built into the roof. And again, no one could see it. You're, on, you're, up, you're up high here, obviously, in the, in the green block. And there it is, your second town hall, the one before the one that's there now. Not up on the mountain. It's beautiful. It was a beautiful building. Built in 1872, it stood for 54 years. See the building next door? Right there. Well, this, the town hall today is so much bigger, they took that down. And of course, it got damaged when this was falling apart from the fire. And they took that down, so now you have, now you have, but look in the back, you got a fire station back there, see it? Still there, still there. Not in good shape, but better shape than Cherry Street, which looks good almost. And Mary was saying it's structurally. Ah. Is it saveable? You think? Or? Yeah. Well, what is it if you got some cash? Oh, excellent! I would love to see that saved right there. It's a beautiful building. And here we are. Oh, come on, let's hear it. Ah, oh, yeah. I remember, you'll, if you'll just allow me a little memory here, I remember when we went up to the, we had an old tract, and we go to the top of the hill. I was six, and we would grab big rocks and fill up the tract, and we come down here, we dug that by hand, the foundation, and I remember throwing the rocks in and splashing, and I remember my father going, gosh, I wish you wouldn't do that. You know? um, he was a little sterner than that, but you get the point. I do have memories of, of building this, uh, and that was 19, 1951, and uh, as strange as it sounds, that guy's name is Mr. Foskett. He lived in Paxton. That's really pushing it, but I actually remember him because he stayed a customer for many years. Uh, if you looked at some of the prices, you'd find a pepper steak tenderloin sandwich was 45 cents, soda wood dime. A clam plate was 55 cents. Yes? That's when he sold gas stuff. Funny you should mention that. <laughs> I also did this. I did this for a lot. You, you went to, we had a big mobile sign near the road, and you can see the prices. We'd come out, and we'd wash the windshield, check the oil, all of that stuff, and my father would say to me, now take care. We have some people from Thompson Pond. I still remember them. They had a big old DeSoto. It took me a half an hour to find the, uh, the gas cap. It was inside the back taillight, like the Cadillacs, and they used to think that was funny. They'd pull up and wouldn't tell you where it was. You know? So. You'd go looking, lifting things, license plates. <laughs> so, no, I'm serious. They actually did that. And my father said, now you take care of them because they're a $3 customer. <laughs> All right. I did, yeah. Wow. And you can see up behind it, it was, we used to go up in those fields and pick blueberries. And, and there is a very rare picture right there. That was a uh, fiberboard building that was used for barracks in World War II. It was surplus. My father bought that, put it on a foundation. We opened it in April, and it burned to the ground. In the same time, see, it might have been you, because it was the sixth grade. It was, I was in the sixth grade. And uh, it, it burned to the ground in December, and that was a really, a really, really tough year for us. Lost everything. Just this corner stood, just like this, this little corner. 
we have pictures of that too. And it was a tough winter. My father rebuilt and built this. I took that picture in 1964 when I was in the, in the Air Force. I came home and was taking pictures. Yeah, looking back, yeah, looking back at all the pictures. And it was, it was starting to fill in then in the 50s. It wasn't, but it was starting to fill in then. I, I, it's kind of a personal thing, but I thought I'd throw in the pictures there. And this was, um, yeah, J. Elton Green. This is the, one of the original Greens who started Green the Florist. This is Spring Street. This was the only building on Spring Street. This was their, like, warehouse. It, in the book, I have a different view of it, so you can see, you can see Spring Street better. And this is the first automobile accident, about 1906. And people dressed to come to see an automobile accident, naturally. And that, you, you know where it is, I hope. That's my house block, right, right there in the old bank building. And there's the massive Sawyer. That's a great shot. My wife and I had our uh, wedding shower there in 1965, uh, quite a while back, as, ma as many people did. And for some of you, are not, this is the library that we're in right there. And now I'll show you a few other things. And then I've got some really interesting things to show you about this. And there's the town hall. You can no longer take pictures that encompass this anymore. You just can't grasp it all. And there is the Methodist Church. You're going to see that in a moment. That also burned down. December 13th, 1943, that went down. And when, I, when I do talks on Worcester and I've done on Charlton, when I do talks on other books, and, and same thing. Burn down, burn down, burn down, burn down. Heating with wood. Uh, well, it was very difficult to even get to them before they were roaring. And that, that arrow is showing you the, the, what we call Clevens. It was, it was Isaac Prouty boot manufacturing. And it just kept going. See the second building here? It just kept going. And if you were able to, I have pictures of it from the other end, and it's just like three of those. Just keeps right on going. It's a massive complex. And then the next picture right there, that's the Congregational Church. So you're able to really grasp a good piece of the town in one picture. But what's fascinating about that picture is, take a good look at the telephone pole. See the other telephone poles? Now notice this man here is about to take a step. He's like, right? Because uh -huh. we've got to compare it with the next picture. See the man taking a step? No telephone poles. Early Photoshop, they took out the telephone poles because itinerant photographers like William Bullard would take pictures and a way to make money would be sell them to postcard companies. So they would come around town, take pictures, and you may not see them again. And then a year later, they would colorize them and they would show up. And that's why I have pictures of David Prouty with cornerstones that are white. They don't even exist. I have pictures of David Prouty and it's yellowish postcards. They just forget. They make notes what color a building is, and they try to do that. But I mean, you can get that all the time, different colors. But you can see the nice job they did colorizing it. But they took out. That's not easy. And I guess they couldn't put the fence back because they left a blank spot where the telephone pole was. <laughs> oh, and the trolley tracks are looking great. Yeah. yeah. There it is in 1910. High Street is right behind it. Up in here, kind of a shame, huh? But they were able to tear the top floor off. But you, you know, you snap a piece of history, and that's what always has intrigued me and found it fascinating. I know I've talked to Mary about that. We both had share the same love for that. And you look down here, and, and you see, there's a woman looking in here. She's looking in the window at some of the, whatever happened, not knowing that someday, 108 years later, some would be in this building that was, there, was here then, looking at a picture of her. I mean, that's a fascinating, fascinating thing. And there they are. Because it came down in 63, mostly 64, that's Clevens coming down. It's, I don't know what you would have done with it. It wasn't something you could make condos out of. It was a pretty tough building. And right across the street is the Marsh Block. And notice, remember I said the... the the front sticks out better now. It's now it's Fenner's. And there, this is our tragedy run right here. Yeah. And that that came down. There was there's no saving that. You know what what can you do with the equipment they had then? 
pretty difficult once it gets roaring. And that's a great shot of the train station with the green block right behind it right there. Nice shot. This is shot up on Lincoln Street looking up the other way. Now there's the Prouty Mansions up on High Street. I went to Pleasant Street School, uh, which is not, not in the building, but probably right yeah. over here. And uh, we, could, we could leave Pleasant Street School and walk up to Grant Street to Matheson's store with a nickel. And, and uh, as long as you went with another person, fourth grade, yeah, leave the school, go get yourself some penny candy. Times were different. Very, very different. But you notice, you, again, we've, we've gone up these streets, and we couldn't put some in the book because you simply, you don't want to see in a book, well, look at trees. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. unfortunate. because you, So you, you miss the opportunity to use a really fascinating photograph. And there is the Massasoit, to give you a frame of reference, just sticking up right here on Pleasant Street, at the end of Pleasant Street, which is right there. Now it's a street. And it looks great out there. This is what happens to negatives when they start breaking down. You can see it curling on the edges over there. They start to break down. This, I, I got this one because this is the American Legion over here. Right here. That was David Prouty's home. That's where he died. That's where he lived. He didn't have the big Prouty mansion. related to the, there were all kinds of Prouties, but he was not one who had big mansions. He lived there. Nice home. He gave us David Prouty High School. And you can see that as you go down the street, you know, these buildings are missing. The church is missing, that's missing. And you got the small cobblestones. This is an 1880s photograph. This is the Sugden block right here, before they built it. It was built in, in 1891, 1991, and nothing there. This is Main Street. This is Pleasant Street. Okay. This, is, this is the big, this is this building yeah. missing. The house instead. The library wasn't quite there yet behind it. And now look at this. Crowded. This is the this is the Mason, yeah, Mason House, which is the parking lot. And over here is the Mexicali Grill. You can see right in here. And look at the people. Late 1890s. Uh, trains came into uh, trolleys came into uh, this town in 1891, and they left in the late 20, maybe 32 or so. They right around that time. They left, uh, maybe 25, I think 1925, because they left Charlton a couple years later, the trolley says. People got buses and little ways to get around better than that. But uh, what they would do is, if you'll notice in between the tracks, that's cobblestones. That, get, that solidified them much better. And I don't know how many of you know, but the, the trolley tracks are smaller than train tracks. You know, they're not, they're not as hefty, not as big. But uh, the trolleys were quite something. I know a woman in Spencer, uh, she... Uh, the mother of a friend of mine who uh, remembers riding the trolleys in Charlton. She'll be 101. Yeah. No, she is 101. She'll be 102 in November and still with us. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's great to hear that story. That's awesome. Is it true that you know, took the, the trolley halfway up the hill so they had to get off? It, it would depend on the load. And it, that used to be true when they were, especially if they were pulled the early trolleys were pulled by horses. Even in Worcester, the early trolleys, until 1893, they were all horse-drawn. And so, yes, if you're going up Dead Horse Hill, it has that name for a reason. Yeah. 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 And that is absolutely true. That They'd have to unload, and some of these things had people really hanging off them. And they acted uh, almost like school buses uh, for some of the kids. And this is a picture here. We're getting to the end now. This, this was the the Kent Boot Factory. This, this was a church. This was a church with a nice steeple. They just simply took that floor off and kept going up. This is Wall Street right here. Yeah. This building's still here. There's no windows anymore. And it kind of looks like that as you go down. And of course, you see the boardwalk to the Massasoit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The wood, wood boardwalk, wood sidewalks. Yeah. Fantastic shot. Yes. And this, this is the Howe building down at Howe Park. You'll see now it's a pile of stones. We had some fun looking at the pile of stones and a monument. It's special meaning to me. Uh, I have many pictures of it. This was taken by Bullard. And it has special meaning to me. The, this, this part here was built first. And yet it's straight. That part was built second. This is where Elias Howe lived. Well, he was born here in 1819. 
and his two uncles were in this part, right. But right now it's just, you know, the, the step in the stones. It has special meaning to me, and I'll end with it, maybe. It has special meaning to me because although this is the end to here, this was our beginning uh, for her great-great-grandmother and my grandmother, who lived with me and crossed me to black and white, I was very close to, was born in that room right there wow. in 1885. And with that, I say thank you for your attention. We'd be glad to answer any questions. And we'd be even happier to sign the books. Thank you. Thank you. Now, any questions for Hannah would be greatly appreciated. No, I'll put her on the spot. I, I have to tell you. We have a question. Yes. Boy, I don't know. <clears throat> Mary, do you? I didn't hear uh, on, on the, uh, by the Dairy Queen is a house under construction on this way. And they're working on it? Oh, no, that's a school. That's a school. That's a school. That belonged to Mr. Green. That, I, I know where you are now. That's a school. Yep. It's, um, uh, th th there was a death in the family, and therefore uh, it, it has ceased temporarily. Next door to it, as you're going towards Dairy Queen, that big old farm, that's where that little cow hooked up was. Right there. Yeah, I, I didn't understand for a moment. Wow. Any, any questions at all? We'd be happy to try and answer them. Yes? I'm sorry? No, no, I don't. Yeah. Oh, yes, a lot. I have a picture at home of Henry Howe, who was the nephew to Elias and that family who was really, he, well, to give you an idea what Henry looked like, he looked like, seriously, I'm not being mean now, he looked like the missing link. He was a very strange guy, and he walked around, he always had a little bag with a bottle in it. <laughs> and he was well known before me, before, before me. I'm not quite that old, but yes. The Sibley Mansion was hurt badly in the hurricane. It wasn't, today, by today's standards, we would never tear it down. By the standards then, it did serious damage to windows, the roof, uh, some of the pillars on the porch, uh, and then, of course, rain damage and all that. So they just tore it down. Again, uh, Mr. Sibley, Rufus Sibley, was, this was a summer home. I mean, that, to me, I've never seen a nicer home, a bigger home built in town. There are some beautiful homes in town, but that's, that was simply massive because that was the farm. And of course, down at the bottom of the hill, what is now, it's, it's in the book, there's a, there's a brick building that is a salon today. Well, that was, when I was in high school, that was also a salon, but it was a milking salon. That was Sibley Farms. And we used to take field trips. How many remember this? And you could get chocolate milk, remember? You try and cut the line again and go for one more shot at it. You know, I remember those. Any, any other questions? Yes, sir. Where does the, uh, the Spencer come from? Spencer, from a guy, Spencer Phipps. Yeah. Spencer Phipps, who was a, uh, we're talking England. And that's how Charlton got their name. If you've got a baron or a lieutenant governor, which, which he was at the time, acting governor, right? Yeah. And you get people who have come over from the, from the, Big Pond coming on the other side. Charlton got the name from you know, Sir Charlton. You know, that, it's that kind of a thing. And if you look around, Worcester, Leicester, Shrewsbury, Oxford, those are all English names. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, like J&M. Does always I see every Christmas, big, 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 huge house on the corner there they always light up. Is that historical? J&M. Sagendorf. 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 Okay, okay. Sagendorfs, okay. Sagendorfs were, were extremely well known. Sagendorf, uh, Mr. Sagendorf was the son-in-law to Richard Sugden, hence this Sugden block. They built a house, and again, that's in the book. You'll see a home uh, up here. You cannot recognize it. I've stood there, and Mary will attest to that. You, you, you have the picture of Sugden having built that home. He built it in 1875 because his wife, okay. his wife committed suicide in his other home out in Wire Village. He moved here. And then his son-in-law took it over. When his son-in-law took it over, 
he, the change is so dramatic. It's even more dramatic than the one I showed you. Yeah. You look at it and you go, okay. Yeah, yeah it's incredible. Okay. Yes, I have some. I just didn't put them in. I have several. I didn't, I had something had to be left. I, at the last moment, I took out a couple pictures of the dams in Wyatt Village. I tend to want to put up things that I've researched so that I can answer questions. I have many homes in that area, yes. Anybody else? I was going to ask you about the, the mills in Wyatt Village. Yeah, yeah I, it's not a subject I know a great deal about. I, re, I certainly remember them. I remember that hurricane, Hurricane Diane and Carol, when they came through and wiped out. Uh, we've got a story in our book about uh, the uh, Seven Mile River where it flowed under the bottom of Pleasant Street. And I remember going down with my brother that, that was put in in 1954, the bridge and the hurricane, by 55, after the hurricane, there was nothing there. The, the, the river widened to the point that it almost crested over by your house. Wow. It almost crested. It, it got not quite over the crest to get past Brookfield Road. And it was just a lake and it destroyed everything. You know the wall that goes around Pray, uh, not Pray, um, Pine Grove Cemetery? That w laid the wall right down on the ground. The force of the water. Yes, sir. Hey, hey. how are you doing? Good, Frank. Question. Hey, I just want to know from Hannah if you enjoy this history the way your grandfather does, and it, it, what did you enjoy most about this project? I love history. It's one of my favorite subjects in school right now. Um, I really enjoy searching for the old buildings or trying to get them as a great perspective so it tries to resemble the Yes. Um, I heard that George Washington walked, uh, rode through town and stayed. Somewhere. George Washington stayed, generally believed. He stayed right next door here. Everybody thought it was the Massasoit. No, it was the Jenks Tavern. He stayed here October 22nd, 1789. It wasn't, it wasn't built then. The Massasoit wasn't built. It was Jenks Tavern. What happened to that, you think? <laughs> burnt down. <laughs> so after that burnt down, the Massasoit was built. Massasoit stayed up about 108 years or so, a long, long time. It survived that big fire, and still, and of course, it finally burned down in a fire. Yes. No, no, I don't. I know very little about the Cranberry Meadow area. Of course, uh, if you're looking at homes down here, most of the um, the early camps are the 20s and 30s, and I tend to be, well, people say, well, you must have it. It's, it's old. It's 1925. Almost everything I have is about 1918 back to the 1870s. So I, I, I don't have a lot on that. Although I try to catch up, it, it's so vast. I, I, I learned long ago, admit when you don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's so vast. There's so much you could know. Any other questions from my dear little granddaughter? You, I have some pictures of 30 hurricane. I have the newspapers of it, right, in, in Worcester. I have lots of pictures of the flood, the tornado in 53, and June 9th of 53. But again, it, it doesn't, I, I have it as an interest, but I don't do a lot with it because I tend to deal with glass negatives, mostly of very old postcards. Good question. Anyone else? What, um, oh, wait a minute. She had, go ahead. Hazel wants to know how big the wagon wheels were. They're so big. All different sizes. Would depend on what they were carrying. Uh, the, the, the diameter of the wagon, and usually the early ones had the metal rim around them, and so you would, you would find a blacksmith would have to make that. Uh, people tended to keep those. You'd see them on a farm hanging on a wall somewhere after. When I moved to the uh, 1946, when myself, my family moved to, across from the black and white to that home that's there now, uh, I have pictures. I was very little, but I have pictures of my brothers who are much older sitting in wagons, sitting on a buckboard, and uh, we just got rid of all of that. What do you want that junk for? You know? So we broke them up, burned them up, firewood. I remember opening the attic window and pushing marble top bureaus out, the, out of the attic because the attic was stuffed with things. Yeah, you just, that happened. It happened a lot, and many of you have those memories. And now you go, I can't believe, yeah, because it's, it's like anything else. I drove a 62 Supersport, Chevy Supersport. 
And people say, how come you got rid of it? It was incredible. I said, yeah, because every time I went to a stoplight, there was one over there and one over there and one over there. <laughs> but if you want to go back 50 years, sure, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. I wish we had more. I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate that I told you I took some of those pictures. And I'm starting to use pictures I took in the book. I don't know if that's a sign of anything. I might be getting too old. <laughs> but I've always loved doing this. I've always enjoyed it. It probably doesn't come through to you at all, but I, I do. I do like this. What parades go through now? What parades do they have here? Boy, I wouldn't have. She, she would know. Yeah, we, we have a Veterans Day parade. We have a Memorial Day parade. We have the first Asians, like when we have the 250th anniversary of the town, we have a huge parade. So, thank you. Yes, someone down Mechanic Street came back up Maple. Yes. They tried to reach, well, of course, those were heavily residential at the time, so you're trying to reach as many residences in the center of town as you can. So they would, they used to call that laddering of parades where you go down the street, back up the street, down the street, back up the street because you want to reach people. They didn't all come right down the main drag, naturally. Yep. Yes, sir. Is there any interest in town to uh, save or upgrade the building across from the Sutton block to the AP used to be? Oh, the Bacon Collette block. I sure yeah. hope there would be. Okay. It bothers me to look up there and see open windows without even a piece of cardboard in the window. And I know that the rain is not selective. It's going in there. Snow is going in there. That's a beautiful building. I remember that building barely. It had the A&P was the bottom floor. I was little. And the A&P was the bottom floor. In fact, my father-in-law was uh, worked there a long, long time ago. The Sanford and Sun building. What is that? The Sanford and Sun. It has old, 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 old signs. Where are you? Brick building. Um, I would say that is the side street here. I don't think no, I'm know. I'm not familiar. Uh, no. Oh, sad. Okay. What is that? That the old brick building uh, down at the bottom. That is um, that was a church. Oh. And remember when I showed you the Prouty Mansion and I showed the one of my first, the very first slide yeah. going down the hill. That was a church. Yes. Yeah. And when we, how many remember bowling in Spencer? Yeah. On Wall Street, upstairs. Wow. Yeah, you went up, upstairs to bowl. Well, thank you. I, I, I'm very pleased that so many turned out. I thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'd like a copy of our book. Thank you. And we will go sit over there. Thank you. <laughs>